If you're lucky, you've known about fairies since you were a kid. Most of us have fond childhood memories of reading fairy tales and fables. The tooth fairy left money under our pillows. And of course, we have Disney fairies and fairy godmothers and even Tinkerbell. But we all know fairies aren't real. Up until the late Victorian era, that wasn't the case. Almost everyone believed in fairies, and two young girls fooled the world for a while and managed to photograph real fairies. Let's dig into this. Fairy folklore is much older than you may think, and fairy stories come from all over the world. It may have started with ancient Persian stories of magical natural spirits with wings. These stories are thought to have spread throughout Asia, Europe, and even Africa, and been adapted along the way to include local folklore and superstitions. Fairies are always powerful creatures that can use their magic to be helpful or incredibly cruel to humans. They can be male or female, and they are almost always described as beautiful or handsome. Some have wings, and some are quite tiny. Groups live together in a fairyland, in wooded areas, meadows, and even lakes. If you see a fairy ring, you have found a fairy land, and today many folks make fairy houses to encourage them, or just for a bit of fun. For hundreds of years, folks believed fairies were real. Evil fairies were feared and helpful ones were encouraged. Homes in rural areas where fairies were known to live were sometimes built with a front and back door facing each other. The doors would be left open at times so fairies could pass through. Protection from fairies was important. Iron, salt, and smoke repelled them. Wearing your clothes inside out confused them. Keeping a piece of bread or a four-leaf clover in your pocket when you traveled was highly recommended. And of course, if you heard a bell ring, you knew a fairy was near. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, spiritualism and mysticism were hugely popular. Seances and spirit photography were all the rage. Magical wee folk like fairies and pixies were used to advertise everything from dish soap to appliances. So, claiming to see fairies was no big deal. The great poet William Blake claimed he watched a fairy funeral where tiny singing creatures and the size of grasshoppers carried a body on a rose leaf and buried it in his garden. And Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of the great detective Sherlock Holmes, believed in fairies too. There were skeptics, of course. Harry Houdini was a famous non-believer who exposed a number of people making supernatural claims as fraudsters. But lots and lots of regular people were convinced there was a thin veil between our world and other worlds, and some people could see and interact with all sorts of beings. One day in 1917, nine-year-old Frances Griffiths and her cousin, 16-year-old Elsie Wright, got into trouble for coming home wet and dirty after playing near Cottingley Beck near the Wright family home in the Cottingley era of Yorkshire, England. They blamed fairies they had been playing with and promised to prove it. Elsie's father was an amateur photographer with his own darkroom, so the girls borrowed a camera and off they went to get a picture of the fairies. Two photos were eventually printed, one showing Elsie with a gnome, the other showing Francis with four dancing fairies. Elsie's father thought the prints were fake from the beginning, but her mother took the photos to a spiritualist meeting where everyone was enthralled. An expert claimed the photos were genuine. He pointedly did not say the fairies were real, but almost everyone believed they were. We should mention that to protect the girls, they were identified as Alice and Iris from this point, and the photos were published in a spiritualist magazine where Sir Arthur Conan Doyle happened to see them. He wrote two articles in the Strand magazine on the fairies in 1920 and then in 1922 wrote a book called The Coming of the Fairies. The articles and book caused a great deal of fuss with skeptics and supporters arguing the authenticity of the photos and the story. 
Investigators questioned the girls and even tried to trick them, but Francis and Elsie stuck to their story and passed all the tests. After a while, the furor died down and life returned to normal. The girls grew up, got married, and moved away, and pretty much forgot about the whole thing until a reporter from the Daily Express newspaper contacted Elsie in 1966. By this time, Elsie thought that maybe what had really happened was she and Francis had photographed their own imaginations. Several articles and television shows over the late 1960s and the 1970s featured the story and showed the old photos, and most said both were hoaxes. Francis and Elsie didn't confess until 1983. By then, photo investigation come a long way, and the Cottingley photos were well known as hoaxes. Elsie said she and Francis had copied and painted images from the 1914 edition of Princess Myrie's gift book and drawn wings on them. They were held in place by hat pins. And it was all just a bit of fun for them. They were astonished and embarrassed that the photos had turned into the huge story it was over the years. And after fooling the great Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, they decided they had better just stay quiet about the whole thing. Francis would only admit to the first four photos being faked, insisting until she died that the last photo, fairies in their bath, was genuine. And Sir Arthur Conan Doyle died back in 1930, reportedly still believing the fairy photos were genuine. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments. Hey, here's another Dragon Den video you might like. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And you can hit the notification bell if you'd like to know when our videos come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.